Well, I'm back at Kiwi's because, as usual, he's got interesting stuff brewing. Which is why you need to subscribe to Kiwi's Custom Classic... Cl customs. <laughs> you got a complicated name. Classics so, and Customs. Yes, you've subscribed to that. Why, why should you subscribe to Kiwi's channel? I'm going to show you why you should subscribe. I because where it is. You can't say it properly. I'm, well, come over here. Look at this. First, let's show them. Let's show them this Mustang. See, this is one of the things you're covering on a channel. Yes, yes, yes. it is. And um, where, yeah. we, where we last left off on this thing, it came in. The motor mounts just pulled off the chassis. Yeah. And it didn't fit. It didn't fit. So what you've done here now is you've completely blown out the firewall. Yes, we've got a bit of extra ventilation there. Heating is. is good into the interior cab there's plenty of heat flowing in there not a yeah. lot of air conditioning but plenty of heat you're going to fill that hole we'll fill that hole yes right. yes. yes so this is moving along and you're covering this all of the stuff you're doing on this on your channel yeah actually there'll be another video out probably today or tomorrow on the you know on this one which we filmed, nice. filmed over the weekend and that'll be on kiwi's classic kiwi classics and customs yeah okay yeah I, all right so yeah that's he's got that going on and uh he's got you know, let me show you something else before we even get into this i know i'm going to start losing people over like why are you doing all of this well look i gotta show you something right this is see this is this is what i keep this is why i keep coming back here right well, aside from the fact that we're friends this this is where literally show quality show winning body work is done right look at this this is like, it's it's literally just an oversized one-car garage. Tell, see, you're the guy who does this. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell the YouTube universe who you are. Okay, well, my name is Barry Bannister. Um, just been painting in here for Kiwi for, I don't know, going on like six years now. Um, you painted like 4,000 cars now. Yeah, I painted a lot for them. We've, uh, we've had some good success painting cars in here. We've done cars and magazines and cars that are getting shipped around the world. So we do... There's some nice paintwork. So you just did this Mustang here. Just did this one a week ago. That's beautiful. That's Customer beautiful. picked a color. Um, what's the color? 21 Bullet Mustang. 21 Bullet Mustang. Green. Highland oh, Green it's called, but it's the 21 um, version of it. So you guys, what you got to do is you need to do more stuff about this right here. In my opinion, in my opinion, this is what YouTube is about. This is people, they don't want to see big fancy shops and the state of the art and everything. They want to see what can be achieved with basically, I mean, really, this is an oversized one car garage. This is something that uh, obviously these guys have a lot of talent and a lot of experience. But the point is, it can be done. It can be done. And these guys prove it literally every day. And that's why you should subscribe to. to Kiwi Classics and Customs. <laughs> there you go, right? All right, so that's, okay, enough of this. Why we came here is because yesterday he did a video about putting torque boxes in that Barracuda. And he said, oh, this is great. This is a perfect opportunity because he's got Mustangs and he's got Mopars here. This is a perfect opportunity to explain how and why the factory reinforced certain sections of the car with torque boxes. So now rather than use the ones that Chrysler built, because they're not good enough for Kiwi, he decided he's going to fabricate his own, and what he made here is a work of art. And if you want to see, you want to see the details on how he actually fabricated them, that's a video he put up yesterday. So go to his channel, sub to his channel, and look at the video he did yesterday. I want to talk about the, the reasoning behind and the differences in torque boxes. So both the Chrysler and the Ford have this in common. They're unibody. Now this applies to anything that's unibody. Now, what does unibody mean exactly, okay? Here's your back frame rail, okay? And here's your front frame rail. And in between is nothing but floor, okay? This is, this is the way both Chrysler's and for the slight, slight differences in the way things are, are, are positioned. But it's this basic concept where you've got a stub frame in the front and you've got a stub frame in the back. And in between you have the rockers. Okay, well, this is terrible. I can't, there we go. In between, you've got the rockers. So the rocker here is actually the frame of the car. Yeah, really, the frame breaks down into three pieces. You've got a front, rear, and a middle section. Right. And the, you know, because you've got 
passenger compartments in the way and things like that. The chassis can't just run in a straight line from front to back. So basically it comes forward and back and then it takes a turn out to the rocker and reconnects. Right. So with Chrysler, what they did was in certain applications and the convertible is, is the most notable because the convertible doesn't have the roof support. One of the things all the unibody hard tops and coupes have in common sedans is that the roof is part of the as part of the frame it's as much the roof the roof rails the side roof rails are as much a part of the chassis as much a part of the frame as anything that's here under the car when you take that roof structure away now you, you've taken away a, a good portion of the car's rigidity so what chrysler did was it reinforced the rockers it used it used a, 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 a reinforcement inside the rocker to toughen it up and then they added a torque box right here, okay? So this, this isn't factory. Here's the factory frame rail here. Here's the factory rocker, also frame rail. Here's where the rear spring mounts up. And then right in this section right here is where Chrysler boxed it in. And the idea there was to have more of a direct connection between this rear stub and the rocker. So show, show where you put the, uh, what you've done here. Yeah, uh, this has already got the cover on it, but we added a piece of three by one box section back here, which you can actually see on this side. Um, that's the beginning of the torque box on this side. Okay. So, so that's tying that to there. So you, that part of the rail to this part of the rail. Um, and basically it really does just stop it doing this. Like, this part of the rail and that part of the rail moving independent of each other that's not what you want uh, so and then this is a little cap which goes over here just to add a bit more strength without taking up any room that, that's going to get welded in and it just creates a box the box is always strong that is so much nicer than the one the chrysler did so when, when chrysler put the torque box in here basically all they did was they left an opening here because okay so here's a leaf spring and here's the pad that the leaf spring mounts to and there are four nuts in here that hold the leaf spring into this section so all chrysler did was it put a, literally just a box a tack welded a box right here with a little hole in it to get your hand in but what you've got what you've got here is like just so much nicer put that up there again <laughs> That's just spectacular. That's beautiful. So now, the second reason why you would want a torque box is because for a high performance, for high performance application, remember that it's a leaf spring car. So 100% of this car's effort, the drivetrain's effort to push the car forward is all being centered, it's all being focused right here. So this is a, is a fatigue point it's a potential fatigue point and that's why chrysler added the torque boxes on hemi cars and then later 446 pack cars just for that little extra bit of backing up this this structure right here that's why they added the torque boxes here and they also added a reinforcement back here that could kind of be considered a torque box you're not going to find it on this one but that was actually put in place on hemi cars for nascar use because when they beefed these things up to go back then they used to use regular unibody car so they do they would start building the race cars off a of basic unibody so chrysler boxed that section of the rear leaf spring in gave it its own specific torque box specifically for the roundy round guys because the, the leaf spring's trying to do it like this so that's that torque box now one thing that chrysler never did was add torque boxes to the front not kiwi no me no <laughs> kiwi is all about the torque box yeah, right, well, wait, we need that light. Oh, I need the light. Okay. I guess it's my experience with Mustangs and their real serious need for torque boxes. Um, now, that now, kind of lead me to wanting to put it in here. Now, let me let me get back here. Why, why do Mustangs require more of a torque box? Let's say than the more parts there. It's, they both require them. Uh, from the factory, Ford didn't put any torque boxes in the front until uh 67. Okay. Uh, they did on their convertibles because they needed the strength because of the whole no roof thing but their coupes and their fastbacks didn't have front torque boxes they basically had this rail that came down here and the only thing that connected the front rail to the side rail which is your rocker was the floor pan 
okay. which is just thin sheet metal, and it would just flex. I remember those cars when those early Mustangs, if you pull the motor out of them, like a 64, 65 Mustang, if you pull the motor out, you can grab the front fender of the car by the wheel lip and just lift it up and the whole car just twists over like there's nothing in there. Yeah, they weren't terribly strong. No. Um, so, you know, we put a lot of them into the Mustangs we get through the shop. Most of the Mustangs we, that come through here leave with the additional torque boxes in them. Uh, so I looked at the Mopar and it really just lent itself it's connected here, like the outside rail is connected to the the rocker through this big cross member here. The bulkhead, yeah. But there's really nothing here. There's a small bracket here, which is one layer of sheet metal and has a little one inch return kind of bending back. And it's like, yeah, that's really not a lot. So we installed some three by one box section here, which is what you see there. Another piece back here, and then basically put the lid on the box. Yeah. Uh, and that, so now this is tied here, here, and here, from the front rail to the side rail. So that's not going anywhere now. So now this begs to answer the, uh, the obvious question. Why did Chrysler and Ford go so nuts creating these torque boxes when all they really had to do on the surface was just connect this frame rail that ends at this cross member with this frame rail? There is literally nothing in between. It's about, it's about four feet from the end of one to the end of the other. Why did they go through all of this, right, with making torque boxes instead of just connecting those frame rails? And the reason for that is because of this construction technique of these cars. They're spot welded. These cars are all made out of, they're all held together with just a zillion spot welds. And the thing about that now, is that this, the metal has to flex. It has to give a little bit. If it's too rigid, if too much force is focused in one area, it'll pop spot welds. So what they did was, both Chrysler and Ford engineers with these unibody cars, and I'm sure General Motors unibody cars as well, but these are the ones I'm familiar with. What they did was just focus on those specific areas to eliminate that twist and to reinforce the suspension but not stiffen the car to the point that loads would be focused in specific areas and therefore creating places that can work hard and, and pop the spot welds. And that's why from the factory, even on the Hemi cars, even on the Max Wedge cars, on the most severe things that they ever produced, you'll never find frame connectors in them. You'll find torque boxes, you'll find reinforcements and gussets here and there, but never frame connectors. Well, uh, trivia. <laughs> The other little thing I'd have to add into that, you're absolutely right Tony, is that the thing that is in the way of connecting the front to the rear is also, you see the depth of the rail here? Mm -hmm. If that continued through, right, to this nice deep rail, you'd lose a bunch of foot room in the back. That is, that is true. And everything, I mean they're production cars, they were production cars, so they had to make them so you could put two adults in the back. Um, there was, you know, there weren't race cars. They're all kind of race cars now, but back in the day, they were just family sedan. Well, U.S. Car Tool makes these frame connectors. Yeah. That are you familiar with them? Yeah, they're all all profile cut. Right, they're and, profile cut to fit the exact floor, and they don't yeah. intrude up into yeah. it. But you end up with a torque box that's that deep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, your chassis rail is only basically that depth, which is an inch, like an inch, a little bit more. Um, so you know, it, it's not super strong. What I've done a lot of the frame rail connectors that I've produced is you, you make, you know, you use a nice big deep piece of box section and it comes up into the floor. And, you know, the rear seat passengers trip over it, you know, they've got to put their feet either right. side of it and, and it's not ideal. But these cars aren't really, we don't build these hot rods to put four people in them. No. We do put four people in them at times, but typically it's just a couple of guys or a guy and a girl. So, you know, you give up something to get something you've got to give something right so to get it super strong here you've got to give up some foot room that's your choice but you're right when you're, you're building a hot you're not doing a restoration if you're building a hot rod don't worry about it just just whack it all together yeah don't put subframe connectors on a genuine shelby mustang <laughs> no no don't idea. put frame connectors on anything you care about <laughs> do what the factory did the fa those are, don't try to outthink the engineers they, they, what, i'm trying to get you in the picture too don't don't try don't 
Oh, okay. I was afraid you're going to come too close. Don't try to, don't try to outthink the engineers. Those guys paid a lot of money. They went to school for a long time. They came up with some pretty amazing designs. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Just, just supplement it as you go along. And bro, you've done such beautiful. I'm telling you, that is the nicest frame, that frame connector. That is the nicest torque box that's ever been installed on a Mopar. That's like just amazing. Yeah, an old guy said to me once a long time ago, he said, if it looks really nice, it probably is really nice. Um, it's not guaranteed, but probably, but if it looks shitty, it's shitty. All right, All right that's it, guys. I'm going to let them get back to work and I get it back to the shop myself. So subscribe to Ki Kiwi Kiwis. Classics and Customs. Right. And, and like need a cue and card up in here in front of you. I can you. never remember, bro. It's like a mental block. Oh. I don't know what that is. Yeah. And, uh, and and again, what, he did a whole video on how he, 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 he doped the situation with this thing out, made it out in cardboard and so on and so forth. I know it seems simple, but when you watch a master at work, right? That's it. That's it, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll say goodbye to them. See you guys.